hey guys so i'm back with another video and in this video we are going to implement uh, an accordion animated accordion effect using dotnet maui so i have created this project and this is empty project i have simply ran it on android emulator so let's get started so first thing let's change the title of this page to uh, maybe animated accordion maui then i'm going to clean the contents of this vertical stack layout the default vertical stack layout and it's empty now and let's remove this count and this counter click method now the next thing uh, for accordion we are going to have one header row then after that header row there will be some content and on click of that header row the content will be collapsed and expanded so that is what we are going to implement so uh, for this uh, i am having vertical stack layout we could have one grid also but for now uh, let me have one vertical stack layout only and inside this uh, maybe let's again have vertical stack layout and the first item of this is going to be a grid with two columns so column definition uh, let's call start and auto and then the first let's add one label with text maybe this is accordion header and the second label we will simply use some icon let's use this icon for now and this first label for this the grid dot column would be zero that is default and for the second one let's move it to the right side so this will be the second column so you can see it accordion header and this is the icon next thing let's move it to the top so for this vertical stack layout we could have uh, vertical options and let's use the start same for this vertical option center we are going to use the start and I think we need to restart it but for now that is okay and now uh, this grid let's add some background color for this maybe uh, gray only and let's add some padding also so padding 10 maybe let's restart it so it's here now now the next thing uh, within this vertical stack layout let's add the contents of for this uh, this accordion so we will use vertical stack layout you could use any control whatever you want so i'm going to use vertical stack layout only and i will add couple of labels so this is this is sample uh, accordion content yes and for this one let's add spacing of 10 and i'm going to copy it couple of times Okay, or maybe or maybe this one yeah that is fine and I will add some background color for this one 
maybe for the header let's use the background color maybe uh, it is a kind of gray only and for this let's use background color a little lighter uh, e okay and now this uh, this headers color is blackish so let's change the labels text color to white and same thing for this one text color white so we are good now right we have this header we have this content maybe we can add some padding from top let's use 30 only yeah this is fine now uh, this icon uh, this greater than sign basically so what we need we need it should be uh, pointing to downward by default because the content is open and when we click on this icon this should uh, move to the upward the direction and this content should be hidden from the screen that is what we need so first thing let's uh, change its direction so we can use the rotation property and we could use 90 degree so we have rotated this uh, text this greater than sign to 90 degree let's make it bold font attribute bold and maybe font size let's make it 20 18 is it changing okay so font size 18 16 okay for this one we could have this thing only so now when we click on this header it should this direction of this arrow should be upward and this content should be hidden so that is what we need okay so for these animations we need to use c sharp code code behind only and when we talk about code behind c sharp so we can access all the controls from xaml with their names so we need to add assign names to these controls so first thing we need uh, this this label this arrow labels name so this is the one so let's add x dot name let's call it icon only and then we need to show and hide this content so this is this vertical stack layout so let's add name to this one also so maybe let's make it items and we are good from xaml side now one more thing we need to uh, add tap for this grid this header so this grid so let's add one grid dot gesture recognizers and we will use tap gesture recognizer and we will use its tapped event new event handler let me move it to this side and we are good from this side let's go to the code behind and we are here now we need to first thing we could try for this icon when we click on this so on this icon we can access it we can use this rotate to event rotate to method so rotate to we know uh, by default it was pointing to right side then with 90 degree it is pointing to downward now to move it or to make the direction upward we need to change 180 degree from what it currently has 180 from what it has so it has plus 90 so it will go till minus 90 so minus 90 degree it will be this and if you look this rotate to this is an async method so we could 
use a weight hand with icing so this is the thing so when we click on this this is going to be pointing upward but when we click on this again we uh, we kind of need a toggle effect so when we click on it again it should again move to uh, downward right so maybe we could have one variable here so private bool and let's call it by default uh, maybe collapsed and default value is false and let's use this so if collapse is false that means the default it should uh, rotate to minus 90 and if it is not collapsed then it should rotate to plus 90 and now next thing we are going to change the behavior of this we are going to change its value to the opposite of its value so when this is false by default it will come here it will okay we should change this minus 90 yeah so by default collapse is false because this is not collapsed and by default it is open expanded and it is pointing to downward that means it is currently at 90 degree so when we first click on it this method this event is going to be erased then we, it will come here and it will be false so it will rotate it to minus 90 negative 90 degrees so it will point upward and then its value collapsed value is going to be changed so it will be then true then if we click on this next the second time then it will come here now the value is true so it will again uh, rotate to 90 and then again we will change it to false so enough talking let's see in action so let me rerun it so it's here let's try it and it's working you can see right when we click on it it moves to the downward and when we click on it again it moves upward so this is working as expected now what we need when it's pointing to upward this content should be hidden and when it is pointing to downward the content should be visible that is what we need right so what we could do we could simply we can access this collection this vertical stack layout using items and we have is visible property right so we could change it to false it will be hidden and if we will set it to true it will be visible okay so first thing when it is coming for the first time we are rotating the icon to the upward and it in that case it should be hidden so it should be opposite of collapsed right so is visible if it is collapsed if collapsed is false it will be visible and if collapsed is true it will be hidden that is what we need so now uh, let's try it again So it's here. You see, it is working. This is the output what we need, but we need it in a different way, right? We need this effect to be animated. Currently, what it is, it does when we click on it, I can. Uh, rotates and the content simply hides from the screen and when we click on it again I, I can again rotates and the content uh, shows on the screen right directly without any animated effect so we are going to add some cool animation here so I'm going to comment this line out now we are going to create one animation right so let's create an animation animation we have animation class here and this animation class it has two constructors first second let's go to its definition and we need the other one we need this one so it has first 
parameter as this action double callback. So it is a callback which expects a parameter of type double. Then start and end. So the default values for start and end is 0 and 1. So this callback function, we are going to add our logic to this callback function. So how it works? It will, this animation will start from this value. So this is 0, 0.0. .0. It will start from here. It will end, end to 1.0. So the difference between these two. So for animation, we need to provide some amount in milliseconds. So it is going to divide the time difference between this 0, 0.0 and 1.0 for that particular amount of time. And it will pass those delta values to this first callback function. So it could say uh, it could have maybe three to four iteration, five, six, uh, depends how long we are running that animation for. So maybe first value it will pass at zero, then the next value 0 0.1, next value 0 point maybe 0.25, again 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 till 1.0. It will provide us this one. So we need to implement this callback method. This is that is the main method we are going to use. So let's go back animation. So it expects that value. Let's call it delta. And the start and end is zero and one. Now this delta. So in order to use the animation we are going to what we are going to do so when it is this content is visible and we need to hide it so we will hide it uh, with some animation effects so maybe for now let's assume uh, the height of this uh, this vertical stack layout is 100 so what we are going to do we are going to hide it uh, with some maybe slide up effect so height will change from 100 to 90 then 80 then uh, 70, 50, 40, 30, 20 and 0 then. Right? So this, this uh, the height, dynamic height, we are going to get it from here. First thing, we should have the main height. So maybe let's call it the height. And we will get it from items dot height. Now, in order to use that new height so let's use one object new height one variable new height and we are going to get the dynamic height multiple times right delta will be from 0 to 1 so for example let's say the first value will be 0 the second value will be maybe 0 0.1 the third value 0 0.25 the fourth value 0 0.4 then maybe 0 0.6 0 0.85 0 0.9 and then final value 1 let's assume it is going to give us these values in delta from 0 to 1 so let's consider these as percentage value okay so 0 percent till 100 percent so 0 percent then 0 0.1 means 10 percent 0 0.25 25 percent 0 0.4 40 percent 60 percent 85 percent 90 percent and 100 percent so how it is going to work so for zero it is zero no matter what so we are assuming let's assume uh, the default height is 100 so for 0 0.1 0 0.1 means we are saying it is 100 into 0 0.1 which gives us 10 so this is 10 percent so what we are going to do, we are going to hide this, maybe let's use the other item for 0 0.25, it will give us 100 into 0 0.25, that means 25, for the third value 0 0.4, so it will be 100 multiplied by 0 0.4, so this is the basic math we are doing, 40 and so on, it will go till 1. So it will be 100 into 1 equals 100. So now we need to hide it incrementally, in, uh, decrease the height of this item. So what we could do, we know we have these values, 100, uh, 10, 25, then 
40 till 100 so this value is increasing right so if this value is increasing we could use this value and we will uh, subtract this value we will minus this value from the main height that is 100 so for first one we could say 100 minus 10 it will give us 90 for second we will use 100 minus 25 it will give us 75 for third value we will use 100 minus 40 it will give us 60 and so on it will go till the last item that is 100 minus 100 and that is 0 so if you see uh, it is changing height initially it is 100 then it moved to 90 then 75 60 and till 0 so we will use we will see that animated effect so from 100 to uh, 90 80 70 75 like this till 0 0 means the content is completely hidden so let's use this formula so we are going to use height minus height multiplied by this delta cool same thing we will use for width so let me copy this and we will use width so item dot width and same thing we will copy the same line for width so let's make it new width and let me copy this so it's width width into delta so it will hide like this now we need to we have these two values now new dynamic values now we are going to uh, we need to change the actual height and width of this items control this vertical stack layout so we could use items dot height requested and items dot width request to this new height and new width i am using this uh, value tuple notation you could use this separately you could use items dot height request equals new height and then in the second line items dot width request equal to new width so how this value tuple works it is actually uses this positional uh, values so for first value that is items dot height request it will set this with this new height and the second value this new width it is going to be set to the second value from left hand side items dot width request so we have these dynamic values and these are default so if we want to keep it these values we could keep this and if you want to remove this we can remove if we want so and we should be good now now we have created this animation but this is not running yet now uh, one more thing the it is going to work for the first time so for the first time it will get the actual height and actual width so the problem not problem we could say it will get the current height and width of these items when we click on this the animation will run and animation will change the height and width through zero right because we are hiding this content we are collapsing this content so now height with this height is height and width these are actually read only properties so it actually computes this height and width and if height request and width request are provided it is going to use these values so when we click on it again for the next time second time now it will come to these two lines now items dot height it will get zero because we already hide the this control this vertical stack layout and same for goes for width items dot width it will be zero so next time for second click it will be height and width will be zero and this animation effect is not going to work so this thing is going to fail so what we should do for this thing we should get this outside of this uh, this event right so we cannot have it in main page because at this time the this class is initialized but components are not rendered and size is not allocated so for this uh, maui provides us uh, one life cycle event so we could override it and that is on size allocated so this width and size this is width and height this is the height and width of this screen for this particular page so we 
get this now if you if you we use these value these values here so control x and v now we will have these values dynamically here because on size allocated when we say base dot on size allocated so this method this is going to allocate size to all the controls so we need to do this because when we are creating our uh, xaml we have not provided the height and width for this vertical stack layouts if we already know the height and width for this we could directly use those height and width values but this content could be dynamic so i am uh, taking the consideration that it will be dynamic so we don't know height and width beforehand basically so we are using this now uh, we need to use this height and width in this method so maybe let's move this here and let's use these variables height and same goes with private double underscore width and we will use this underscore height and underscore width we are setting these on size allocated then we will use these values inside our this uh, tab gesture recognizer so we will change this to underscore height and we will change this to the underscore width now we are good now this is working only for first time right we are using the same thing we need to uh, reverse this logic for expanding so we have already this collapse flag right so we could have two different animations we will use if and else for that or the second approach we could do we could have this if and else inside this animation only so we will use if this is not collapsed that means this is the default case when we are going coming for the first time then we are using this so we will stick with this logic only and if this is not the case collapse is true that means we are coming for the second time and second time means it is hidden so we need to show this content this content is collapsed we need to expand this content so we will revert this logic so what to, what i need to revert means we were coming from 100 to 0 in this case when we were hiding it collapsing it and now when we are expanding it we will come from 0 to 100 so the simplest logic would be simply copy this logic and we know 90 75 60 40 0 this is coming right like this so we could simply revert it we will use 100 minus 90 so it will give us 10 100 minus 75 it will give us 25 so like this only so this value we will get this value the different way right or so what we what i meant with this i can use height minus this logic right i could say width minus this logic this is what we need so it will give us 10 20 30 40 50 till 100 so it will come from 0 to 100 that means this content is completely expanded same goes for width so if you look closely what we could do we could simply uh, height minus height for now we can uh, maybe modify this code height to positive negative we could remove this this minus it will be plus so the thing is we could remove this thing we could use directly this thing right what do you mean what do i mean not you so if we remove this it will be like this right so height and height these will be cancelled and this plus so the value will be this thing so we need this right this delta now this delta is going to be from 0 to 1 means when we are multiplying it with height that means it will go from 0 percent to 100 percent that means from 0 to the actual height and actual width what we need and it should be good right in this we are collapsing 
collapsing and in this else case we are expanding and this logic it should be good now now uh, the prop we have just created this animation now we need to run this animation so in order to run this animation we have simply created it we have not run it so in order to run the animation we have one method on this that is called commit so commit this commit requires one owner it could be anything this or items or whatever element we need we can use it it does not matter in our case basically then the second parameter it requires one name for this animation so maybe accordion we could use this name and these two are required parameters right after this there are a couple of other parameters all these are optional parameters you could see so rate with default value 16 length easing action finished repeat all these parameters we don't need all these parameters now this commit this returns void this is not an async method so what it is going to do this commit method it will going to trigger the animation that's all it is going to do so it will trigger this animation and this animation is going to run for the time specified we have not specified the time so it will use the default time that is 250 milliseconds now the problem is let's say uh, it is taking the same example it is taking these value so the control came to this line commit and it started this animation so for first value came 0.1 it ran this piece of code then the next value came 0.25 it ran this piece of code then because we are not waiting on this so it will simply trigger and it will the control will go to the second uh, the next line next line is collapse equals not collapse that means we are reversing the value now for the third iteration that means for 0 0.4 this thing it will come here and for now the collapsed value has been changed right we have changed the value at this line so now for 0 0.4 it will run this else part and it will break our animation so that is not what we want right so we want something so we want to modify a collapsed value but only when this animation completes so dot net maui it has given us that facility so if you look to commit this method we have this finished callback right this action double bool finished so we could use this one so we could use finished and it takes two parameters double and pool and we do not need any of these values so we could simply discard this so i'm going to use underscores for this because i'm not going to use this value and when the animation finishes i am going to use this piece of code here only so hey when the animation finishes just reverse the collapsed value so if it was true make it false only when animation completes and if it is false make it true only when the animation completes so we simply conveyed our message that what needs to be done now the code is done and we should be good to go okay so let's run it so it has run and let's use this so you see it is actually uh, shrinking to the center and expanding from the center only right so this looks cool but there is one problem with this uh, not problem maybe we need this functionality only so I want you to pay attention to this icon right when we click on this first the icon moves icon changes its direction then the animation for this particular uh, piece of uh, control this vertical stack layout starts right the same goes for when we click on it this is going to point downward then this uh, the content is going to be expanded so if you click on it so these are kind of first animation works for this icon then works for this content and this is happening because we have added await 
to this rotate to if we want both of these animation to run at the same time we could simply remove this await from here and let's move this to and maybe let's remove this item dot is, is visible we don't need this we will simply come here and we will use this thing so when it comes here now we don't need this async because we are not using any async feature of it Sorry. so first thing we have created this animation second thing we are rotating it and when while it was rotating we simply triggered this animation as well so now these two animations are going to be run uh, at the same time so let's rerun it again it's coming and you see both of these starts at the same time so this is cool right this is what we need so it's working fine it looks good and now uh, let's check it on other devices so on android it is working as expected let's minimize it stop it and first let's try it on mac run it so it came here let me move it to the screen so it is here and if we see it is working right you could use uh, other techniques as well i am using this height and width directly so you could play around with it so it is giving us what is expected but it looks a little bit uh, maybe it can look weird for someone but you could play around with it so it is what we need so it is working as expected let's try it on other environment other platform let's try it on stop it try it on iphone so it's here and you see this animation the icon this is smoothly uh, changing its direction but the content it is actually not animating it is sh getting shown and hidden instantly right so the animation is not working for this one so let's check why it is not working let's add breakpoints so we will add breakpoint here and let's click on the animation click came here we are here for this and height is minus one and width is minus one why we got this underscore height and underscore width from on size allocated so let's try to add a breakpoint here let's remove this breakpoint and rerun it and breakpoint hit so if we check width 414 height 804 so this is for screen for this main page now let's move and height is minus one so items dot height is minus one items dot width is again minus one that means somehow this on size allocated this life cycle event this method is broken on ios right it works on windows it works on uh, android it works on mac os but it does not work on iPhone so we need to use some different logic for this so what we can do okay let's try to add a breakpoint here and continue from here and let's click on it it came here let's check what we have items dot height now we have two to six and items dot width three five four that means we can get height and width in this method only but 
we should get the height and width inside this event only for the first time right because after that we are going to modify the values so what we should do we can check if underscore height is less than equals to zero we could use minus one only if we want but we are not setting some value here so let's use less than equals to zero only if height is less than equals to zero that means we could not get the height from there so we will simply copy these two lines here so let's see what we have done for all other platforms it will come here it will set the height and width but for so it will come here when we click on it height is not zero because we got this height for other platforms so it will simply skip this if block then it will continue and in case of iphone this piece of code ran but height and width are minus one so height is minus one so this piece of code is going to be executed for the first time it will set height and width then when we click on it again so for the next time this heights value will be greater than zero so it will skip this piece of code so it looks fine now so let's rerun it and let's see if it is working now so the breakpoint hit and we can verify it again we have height minus one width minus one let's continue and let's check our emulator simulator we clicked on it it came here height is actually minus one it came here now we have height two two six and we have width three five four that means we have these values so now if we continue we will see the effect when we click on it again the next time now height is already set so this piece of code is not going to be executed again now the animation will run smoothly let's remove this breakpoint both of the breakpoints let's continue this time open the simulator and let's try it so it is working right it is animating so we got it working so this works fine but only thing uh, this height and with this check this is going to be checked for all the platforms but we have this problem only on ios so what if we could say that check this only for ios so guess what we have this ability so we could have uh, device dot can we use platform or maybe device info dot can we have platform yes dot so we will use device info dot current dot platform and this platform type of this platform is device platform this enum so device platform dot ios if we are currently running on ios and height is less than equals zero then this piece of code should be executed right so let's check it let's add a breakpoint inside this if right or maybe let's add one here also and we are on ios so let's run it and let's check if we got it correct or not so it's here click on it we are here let's check for platform we have ios that means this condition is going to be executed and we have height and weight let's continue let's click on it again it came here again platform is ios but this time the height we already got so this if is not going to be executed and this is fine now let's try it on other platforms so stop it from here let's check it on mac so this piece of code this should give us mac os and it should not execute in any case so let's run it so mac is here let me pull it up so it's here let's click on it 
it came here now this time the platform is mac catalyst so it is not iOS. so it will not execute this piece of code so we should be good right continue let's remove these breakpoints and let's try and the animation is working so we are good now now let's close this let's again change to ios now uh, this is one way of checking this now on ios do we need this on size allocated no because there is no point of using this because we are not getting anything from on size allocated so what if we could skip this piece of code on ios and it should run on all other platform so what we can do we can simply copy this we can use this and we can say this thing right if it is not equals to ios now the problem with this approach is this piece of code this will be this method actually on size allocated this is going to be executed called for all the platforms but so it will be shipped for all the platforms but what we need if the platform is not ios there then there is no point of overriding this method right so instead of checking this thing this runtime thing what we could do we could use conditional compilation that means we could use if ios and if if this is not ios if this is not ios then execute this and if it is ios then do not execute this right do not compile this do not add this basically in inside the bundle so let's add a breakpoint here okay we have iphone so we are running ios and we'll check if this breakpoint got hit or not let's add here also so let's see so let's wait loading debug building so this piece of code this condition and this is very small so we could have this condition if device info current platform dot device platform ios but it is not recommended for because there is no point of having such condition right we could simply skip this using this conditional compilation so we could do this also this thing here also in that case we will simply use if ios without this explanation mark because we need to run this if condition for ios in that case we could simply use this ios and we could remove this first if condition we will have only the second condition so this app loaded and this breakpoint did not hit right and this breakpoint hit that means the debugger is working fine continue this time and we are here and the animation is working let's try it for other close it add it and let's use android for this time let's run it this time this breakpoint for on size allocated this should hit right because this is the platform is not ios this is android so it should hit so it is loading and deploying to device I don't it takes so much time on uh, Mac actually on Windows it does not take this much time okay so this breakpoint got hit on size allocated right so it will work for us for this thing we click on it breakpoint came here we continued and it worked we remove this and this is 
working as expected right so for now i am going to have this approach here only for your reference so you could see this approach and this both of the approaches so if you don't want to go this route what you could have done you could have simply said if ios and and if that's all and in that case we don't need this thing uh, this thing we will simply use this thing so we could have used this approach also this will be comp conditional compilation so for now i am going to use this approach so you can see both the approaches we can use both so yep and if you want to uh, extend this code and if you want to contribute for this code you your prs are welcome i'm going to move this to github and i will add the repo to the video's description and first pinned comment and please like this video if you like this video share it with your friends or fellow or developers or colleagues and subscribe my channel for more videos so i'll be back with another video yeah bye